for this shot, I'm gonna walk you through how I developed this lighting recipe. I wanted to have this nice cross light with two gels of opposing color, and then a little pop of light highlighting the model's face. I wanted something that was a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more poppy, and you'll see the difference lighting this shot without the gels and then lighting it with the gels. Now, when lighting with gels, it does present some exposure challenges because a lot of photographers wonder how can they get maximum saturation out of the colors of these gels. I'm gonna walk through how we develop our lighting recipe. The first thing I wanna do is know what my lights are doing. And to do that, I'm gonna go around and meter each light individually to make sure that my light is even. And then I'm gonna go back and adjust exposure of each one relative to one another based upon whether I want more saturation, less saturation, whether I want her face to pop a little bit more or a little bit less. So let's get started. I'm gonna measure my light here, and I know I'm gonna wanna start off at around F8. So I'm gonna start by metering right at my subject's face. And I'm getting F8. And just to make sure that the light is hotter, more towards her head than the rest of her body, I kind of start at the forehead, I go to the chin, and I come right about to her midsection so I can see how the light's falling off. So now I'm gonna turn this light off, and I'm gonna turn my other light on. And again, kind of starting here, And again, I'm fairly even. Next, I'm just gonna meter my overhead light. And this light's really important because this is where I'm gonna to start to give my model direction in terms of where she can move her head so she doesn't come too far in or out of this light. And so one thing I'll do is I'll ask her, are you able to kind of see through the grid? Yeah. Perfect. First, I'm gonna make sure that I don't have a hot spot to her left or to her right. And I noticed the light's a little bit hotter over here, so I'm gonna have her move over about half a step. Perfect. Now I'm exactly at 8.0. So I use the meter, because when using a spotlight like this, the light can fall off dramatically, and this also helps me position my model. So now I'm gonna turn all my lights on. And basically all of my lights were metering about F8, or within a tenth of a stop of there. Now I'm gonna meter everything together. Right here at her chin, I'm getting 11.7. Right here at her forehead, I'm getting 11.6. So her face is basically within a tenth of a stop and very even. Now I'm just metering to the left and to the right to make sure right in the center is where we have the light the hottest, which is what I have now. So this is how I'm starting off with my recipe. Now we're gonna add a little seasoning to it. So now I'm gonna gel my two side lights and take some additional meter readings to find out how these gels change my exposure. It's very important, once you add gels, your exposure changes. You can find this out by using a meter because you're gonna have to go back and readjust those lights. So what I did is I turned all my lights off again except with one, and I'm gonna go back and re-meter them individually. So starting with the blue gel, I see that I lost about 3.1 stops. So I'm gonna come back over, add 3.1 stops, take another meter reading. I'm exactly where I wanna be. I'm at about F8.0. And now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna meter this light. So I lost about three stops over here. So I'm gonna turn that one off. And now I'm on magenta light. I lost about 2.5 stops, so I'm gonna add that back in. And I'm gonna re-meter. Perfect. I'm about F8 on both these lights. I'm gonna bring both of them back on. I'm gonna take a combined reading of both of them. And I'm still, I'm about F8.8. So combined, I gained about eight tenths of a stop. Now I'm gonna add in my light up top.
And now my combined reading is about F11. I'm gonna take my first exposure just to see what the light looks like right now. Now that I got these lights dialed in and I've adjusted the exposure to compensate for adding the gels, I wanna get a little bit more saturation in the walls. The way I'm gonna achieve this is I'm actually gonna dial up my light in the center to raise my overall exposure, and it's gonna increase the saturation I get over here in the walls. So I'm gonna turn that up by about a stop. I'm gonna re-meter again. I'm at about 11.6, 11.8. And now we're starting to see a little bit more of a halo around the model's face. Now I wanna go for even more saturation in the colors in the background. So I'm gonna raise my center light up by another half a stop. Now I'm at F16. So now I have about a stop and a half difference from the model's face to about right here. So now I know I'm gonna get much more saturation in the walls, which is the creative effect that I'm going for. So in conclusion, the meter helped me find out a few things with this shot. Every time you're working with different gels, their age, their color, the thickness of some gels can cause them to change your exposure. You wanna know this without trying to test it on camera so you can get all your gels dialed in. And remember, for maximum saturation on a white wall, you're gonna to wanna to expose about a stop and a half under what the meter is telling you. To see what all of my exposure readings are and to get a lighting diagram of this lighting setup, as well as what filters I use, go to the website and download the free lighting diagrams that let you know how we set our lights and allow you to have a cheat sheet on set if you want to duplicate the same recipe and add your own touches to it. And always remember, please share.